Hi, welcome to the Family Teams Podcast. Our goal here is to help your family become a multi-generational team on mission by providing you with biblically rooted concepts, tools, and rhythms. Your hosts are Jeremy Pryor and Jefferson Bethke, and this season is all about crafting a family-friendly day of rest. We'll talk about the biblical idea of Sabbath, hear testimonies from different families, and also discuss practical ways to do this with kids. Make sure you give us a follow so you don't miss out on future episodes. Sweet guys, well, welcome to the Family Teams Podcast. I'm here with Jeff and Alyssa Bethke. You guys know that we are always trying to figure out ways to equip families for how to be teams. And one of the greatest tools that we've been trying to figure out is how to have a Sabbath. And so we want to talk to you guys about lots of different ways to do this, especially with little kids. It's like, one of the number one questions we get, how in the world do you rest when you have littles in your, it, it, that you have to care for? Is that just torture calling that rest? And then it's just another day like every other day. Um, yes. And so we, we have a lot of families that have tried to figure this out. I wanted to dial in and, and talk to Jeff and Alyssa about how they've tried to figure this out. So we're going to go into your story um, and and try to understand like, like, you know, both the, how this evolved for you. So yeah, talk to us a little bit, a little bit about like, when you first started, because a lot of a lot of yeah. folks are like they're hearing this idea, like okay, a day of rest. Totally. Um, yeah. How did how did that this strike you? Um, you know, give us that yeah. story background. I'd I'd love to hear Alyssa's answer this too, but I think um, it's funny. I was just thinking about this the other day. Not even just the beginning. I'm going to give a quick overview of the yeah. whole thing, and what I mean by that is, I was thinking, about, I was reflecting on this the other day. I think we've been you know honoring Sabbath pretty much since we've had kids, so eight years now, seven years now. You know, getting close to there. Mm-hmm. Um, now there was a, there's a couple, a couple things with our journey. Like I would say there was like a two year delay between us, meaning like I was all in really, really, really quickly. <laughs> Alyssa maybe wasn't. So that's yeah. something she can talk about if she wants. But, yeah. but then I would, I was reflecting on this the other day. We've almost gone through like three or four iterations of it, of seasons of it. Mm-hmm. I feel like the beginning was like kind of the, um, the struggle. Like I do right. think it takes a year or two to kind of be like, yeah. kind of to get your family identity in there to kind of pull off all of the misconceptions that you think it is. Um, the pressures and a lot of the, like, you know, the crashing and burning feeling, which I think is very common for people that try to go into Sabbath. It's Mm. what happens with people who it it tends to resonate with people who are, you know, it's going to go like um, they're a little gung ho, if that makes sense. So it's just a little like, Whoa, Hey, take, let's build up, understand what the practice is. So that's that. So I would say the first two years was kind of struggle. Mm. Then I would say the next two or three years was just like bliss of it. Like really special, really awesome. We were dialed. We had it good. And then I would say even just the last year or two, life kind of started to really started to feel like it started to nudge at it. And that's a whole new season too, of like, okay, what do we actually do when the kids are getting older and there's things? Um, I would even say like the, the mundaneness of it started to kick in after like six, seven years of just like, yeah. you know, okay, you know, um, missing a little bit here and there, not always sticking with it as much. And that was an interesting thing for us. Cause it was so like, you know, built into our culture. The one thing I think I realized with that though, that I'll, I'll say before Alyssa hops into like, maybe how she would, you know, philosophize it is, um, is what I, I, cause now we're, again, we're now, it was mainly cause of like a work busy season and sickness and some of these other things that kind of make it took a dip. But one thing I'm really stoked on, as I look back, is we still held to like the, the threads of it. We yeah. never just like, because it was so ingrained in us, we didn't just like completely forget it and not do it anymore. Mm. It just wasn't as like magical. It was kind of just like, oh yeah, pizza night, you know, love you Lord, mm. light the candle. Sometimes, yeah. you know, we kind of like, we're, I feel like we would crawl across the finish line if that makes sense to get to Sabbath. Yes. Um, but now reflecting on it and now getting back into another good season of it. I feel like it's like, oh yeah, what I'm really thankful is that we stuck it out because sticking the little threads mm. still do something. It's just, it, yes. it holds you, it holds your identity, it holds your family. And so, yeah, I do think it's an up and down thing over eight years for us that just like how we can, you know, the seasons of it. But yeah, what would you say to that? Yeah, well, I I probably mentioned on here before, but when we first started, I had never heard anything about it. And Jeff um, all of a sudden came home and he was like, we're doing Sabbath and this is how it's going to go. And and I was like, I don't even know. And we, I wasn't wasn't talking about me when I said people get gung ho. (laughs) (laughs) And Kinsley was a baby at the time. And so, um, he was very kind. I think you totally had an understatement of me being two years behind because I really wrestled with it because it felt like, wow, as a young mom, it just, it almost, um, felt unfair. Like, well, it's no different for me. Like my baby still needs all the same things. And, you know, I'm still nursing. I still have naps and poopy diapers and we still need to clean the house and all of this. And so it felt almost, you almost thought it was like a fake attitude thing. Like, are we just kind of saying it's a day of rest? (laughs) Yeah. And it felt almost like Jeff had his day of rest and I still kept going on with everything. Like he would sit and read for a very long time, which was 
I want him to do that, but it just, it didn't feel like we were on the same page. And so um, it took us about two years to like, um, and I had to repent of that. Like I wasn't as, okay, yeah, let's pursue it. I want to be open to it. I felt very mm-hmm. closed off to it. Yeah. And so, um, but then after a couple of years of learning about it and that it really is a gift and it's a gift to us and how wonderful it is. It was like, okay, yeah, we're in, like, let's figure this out yeah. together. And it really has taken multiple years. And the, the beautiful thing about Sabbath is that it's every week. And so um, I think in the West, we just, we want to be so linear and we think it just has to get, I don't know, just linear. And then also like we have to nail it. And if we yeah. don't, then we just give up yeah. on it instead of this like cyclical thing of like, Oh, we have a chance to, learn every week like this worked this didn't work okay we won't do that again oh we really liked that let's keep doing it and so it really has taken multiple years and even within that yeah Yeah. like we found a really sweet spot and then work got so insane like totally different type of work and so it almost felt like we had to relearn and re Mm -hmm. it's so interesting how rest um you wouldn't and I think this is where people it gets hard is that it takes a lot of work to get Mm -hmm. to rest. And so it's not like a natural thing where we just wake up and we can just chill all day. It's like, you really have to work to prepare to rest well and Mm -hmm. learn how to rest well. And so it takes time. Yeah. Well, I think two points there is, you know, obviously the Hebrews verse where it says strive to enter the rest. That's so clear that that's what it is. And then I think even what, you know, in Genesis, like, you know, like you've talked about, like Genesis is, you know, Genesis isn't this peaceful, beautiful, like, um, you know, uh, like fairies and, you know, babies with wings seen, even though there is a shalom about it that is, it is in the context of that book, it really is a warfare book. And especially the first couple of chapters is like a warfare, you know, with the, with the high councils and the, you know, and the, and the, the powers of evil. And like, there's some of these things that are just behind the surface yeah. when you kind of read the text and understand the, the ancient Near East that I think implicate Sabbath in a more powerful way. Cause then Sabbath is not just the day at the end of the week. That's like, Oh, it's all done. <clears throat> but it's actually like, it's actually almost like a completeness and like a blessing of like the warfare victory. So you kind of have to like, I just think there's something about that thinking about it that kind of uh, should interpret how you think about Sabbath. It's actually a day of warfare mm-hmm. against, and that's, that's Walter Brueggemann's, you know, thesis yeah. basically is yeah. that it's a day of, of warfare, um, you know, against, he calls it a day of resistance, but yeah. against idols and against pressures and against productivities. But I think understanding that gives you a different attitude because then right. people in warfare don't just lean back and eat potato chips. They like, I'm actively going to fight, yes. uh, you know, by joy and by rest and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah. yeah. So there is this, this expectation that it should be easy. Like all I have to do is yeah. stop. Like mm-hmm. all we do is call it a Sabbath and it magically is restful. And I am yeah. feeling recharged. Like mm-hmm. th- those expectations are very real. And when people hear this and especially when they get excited about it uh, or the excited spouse tells the other one, like that's often what they, what they're sort of anticipating. Like wouldn't the, won't yeah. this be so epic? Yeah. Yes. So like, I think, I think that it's the mismatch between the expectation and the actual challenge is really where I think we want to start to, to really sensitize you guys to this. Like, yeah, this is not going to well, be easy. This is going to be taking ground. Yes, yeah. exactly. And that's what it is. It's a practice, which the word itself literally shows yeah. you what it is. You know what I mean? Like no one goes yeah. to a sport. No one tries to become a chef. No one, you know, becomes right. an artist. Mm-hmm you know, and thinking like, oh yeah, like, you know, the artist metaphor, like I'm just going to paint beautiful landscapes and all this. And then I've never touched paint and I've never mixed colors and I've never bought and then stapled canvas. And then the day, first day you do it, it just is like the worst thing ever. Your child could probably do something better. And it's like, that's the, yes. that's the metaphor though. Of like you practice, do it, at, you know, it's sounds, I mean, you can go Gladwellian on it too, that it's, just, it's basically a 10,000 hour thing, but, yes. um, but you have to, you have to have it in that framework or else you'll see your setup to fail. Yeah. So Alyssa, you, um, one of the things that you mentioned is that you get it, you get like reps and you're like, Oh, this didn't work. And I, I think, I think the idea that, that we're living into a cycle that repeats is really where the hope comes from, as opposed to we're going to nail this the first time. Yeah. And so like talk through, like, like as a mom, who's trying to anticipate how this is going to go. Um, yeah. Like any, any thoughts on term, either mindset. And I'd love to hear too, if there's any any insights in those iterations that you guys learned that, that helped mm-hmm. you start to crack the code for your family? Yeah. Um, such a good question. I think, <clears throat> and honestly, to answer the question about what works and what doesn't, sometimes it's like overall our family, but it's more for me personally, like I do things or I don't do things. And I realize that 
helped me to be close to the Lord and rest well, or it really just kind of sucked the life out of me and was no different than another day. Like um, maybe I went shopping and I'm like, to, sometimes that's great. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I just felt like I, that was not life-giving. It felt like, um, I don't know, consumerism or I was, or more, it's all like, it's really about self-awareness. What's going on in my heart? Like sometimes it's like, oh, I feel this need, like a lack of, so I'm going to go try to figure it out. And that's the whole resistance against what Sabbath is about. It's like the one day where we can stop and trust that the Lord is at work, that it's not about our ambitions. Yeah. It's not reliant on us. It's so it's like, and that takes work to constantly, it's just like um, an exodus with the slaves. Like the whole reason Leviticus is written about all the laws is because they had to relearn what it looked like to be children of God instead of these slaves that were just constantly doing these things. And so um, I think it has to, it's just a really self-awareness of what's going on in my heart, what works, what doesn't, what gives life, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as a young mom, I think for me, I had to realize that, you know, Sabbath is not going to live into my ideals. It's not going to be this perfect day that's free from toddler tantrums and even fights with my husband. Mm -hmm. And we never fight um, on Saturday. <laughs> you know, like, hey, that we're like, that's we'll, wait, no, we'll, we'll talk about that on Sunday. <laughs> talk about that on Sunday. And I think that's that had to be something in my mindset of like, it's still a day, but it's an invitation from the Lord to rest. And so, and that takes preparation, mm -hmm. just like for Christmas or any holidays or birthdays for my kids, I have to prepare, like, what are we going to have on the menu, getting the presents. And, and so it's not like we're, it's a huge holiday necessarily in that sense, but it is like, okay, for me, I'm going to try to get all the laundry done before Friday night so that that's not even a thing. And I'm going to try to clean my house well enough so that on Saturday, I'm not going around constantly thinking of all the things that bother me, yeah. you know? So like, yeah. or on Saturday, we're going to get out of the house. So I'm not, even thinking about cleaning up or what's yes. going on in our house. So um, that. I think yeah. those as a mom, it just kind of gives me like rest in my mind. Yeah. Um, that was really helpful. No, yeah, I agree. So. That's good. It's interesting. I think, I think that one of the keys that you're describing is that for, for a mom, <clears throat> how you Sabbath, it, it could be super implicated by how you do a Friday as you're describing yes. kind of like, and this is way, this is the way in Israel you'll notice like, most mothers have very strict, very consistent and repeated Friday rhythms in order yeah. to make sure that Saturday works for them. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it's crazy when you go to the Shuk in Jerusalem and you just see the people just buzzing around yeah. and there's so many people just, they call it even the day of preparation, which yeah. is to say that, look, you, it's going to take time for you to figure out how to do a Friday. And you might not know how to do a Saturday until you've learned how to do a Friday. And this is one of the weird things about doing a Sabbath is it begins to implicate all the other days of the week, a Sunday becomes something different when you rest mm -hmm. on Saturday. It, yeah. it, some people, of course, rest on Sunday. The same thing yes. will happen. You, it'll have this reverbiate, reverbiating effect both yeah. directions on your week. Yeah. Yeah. It just yeah. kind of, totally. it kind of cascades both ways and, and really mm -hmm. implicates the days with identity rather than just like, it's always yeah. the same or it's always different. Mm -hmm. yes. Cause that's, that's the two pole opposites of the, of most people's family life is every day is different. Yeah. And so that's too inconsistent and chaotic or every day is the same. And that's too kind of mundane. God kind of had us, wanted us to live in the same, but different kind of rhythm. Um, but yeah, and it's funny, you know, that's even a point to a counterpoint or no, a sub point to what Alyssa is talking about is, yeah, she definitely is the like, and it actually sometimes frustrates me the like yeah. the, the before Friday night, like a little busybody of like got to learn laundry and this and this and this and this, but I get why. But it's also... I'm learning to try to be a non-anxious presence instead of like, oh, we got to get it yeah, all done. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so, and so for me though, it's a, it's a learning thing too, because there's two things there. One, I'm like, it's, it's selfish of me to not serve and help that because I am totally fine. of like, Sabbath is in 30 minutes. Like I don't let the, let the house burn. Like I don't, I could care less. <laughs> Um, you know what I mean? Like it's that for me, I'm very able to just be like, disconnect from it. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't make me feel non-rested. And then, um, but I think that's, that's one point that's really helpful in the family dynamics with Sabbath is they go best when you're not selfishly trying to find your rest, but you're kind of rhythmically trying to engage with each other's rest, you know, and, and understand that there's different styles. There's yeah. different, it's kind of like the corporate versus the individual. It's like, we want individuals to feel all filled up after a day, but we want the family to feel filled up. And then I think, you know, the, the real point there, I would say to husbands is one thing I've learned is I'm even okay sometimes now. Cause yeah, in the, in the early times I was like very selfish. Like I, this is Sabbath. I'm going to read a book for nine hours and you know, and if the kids <laughs> are just, you, right? yeah, and if the kids are just like, you <laughs> Wasn't know, that like, great? yeah. And so, 
which I get that now. And so for like me, this is most busy work day of the, of yes. the week. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was, it was anti-Sabbath. It, it, was, it was anti-Sabbath. But, <laughs> but for me, <laughs> what I would say is what I've learned though, is um, how would I say this? That I'm, I, I still want to find my own rest and find my own off button. And we do a good job of that. But I feel like there's sometimes I'm even willing to kind of sacrifice mine a little bit for her. And I feel like it does some, and because I noticed the fruit of it, I'm like, oh yeah, she is really getting that day, yeah. you know, um, in a really powerful way Then it just actually does give me rest in a weird way, even though I might not be, you know, even if I'm watching the kids maybe for a couple hours while she's out or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I like that. And I, and I've just noticed that, that it's kind of like about serving each other is really helpful too. The family plan calendar is the new way to keep your family team organized. Plan your rhythms, menu, household chores, and notes for the family all in one place. Visit familyteams.com to purchase. Yeah, Yeah, and I think that's why sometimes at the beginning it's so hard. I don't want to say it's so hard, but it takes so much time to know how to Sabbath well because you're also learning about yourself. And you change. You change too. And and every Saturday it's kind of like you kind of need something different. Mm -hmm. And so I Well, I don't, but yeah. I feel like you do. And so I think like... (laughs) asking yourself (laughs) what sounds fun what is restful to me and then communicating with your husband and then and then also as you do it with your family what's fun for them and so I remember when the kids were like five and under I feel like the best thing for us is Saturday morning to get outside we'd go to the beach we'd go for a bike ride we'd go for a hike Mm -hmm. just anything outside it felt like such sweet family time and it filled me up because we were out in nature Mm -hmm. and I loved it because I felt like I had all of Jeff's attention yeah and they had so much fun and then they were tired to have nap time or rest time. And so we could then kind of do our own thing yeah. and then come together that night. So I think just being self-aware yeah. and then communicating with each other too is yeah. really helpful. Well, and then just one more nugget to, to people with littles, because I know that we're specifically talking there is I think one thing we learned too, is we actually, I feel like have destructured ours a little bit on Saturday since the beginning. And what yeah. I mean by that is just like, and again, every family's different. But I think sometimes I was a little bit more like, let's segment it off and block it all off. And I think we might do that when we're older because it was, you know, bigger family, older kids. I want to connect with them emotionally, et cetera. But now it's really just like we have just realized, like if we just kind of get up, if one thing is if I if I can really get away from the technology side of my work, then that changes the whole dynamic of the family because I'm all in now. I'm just all in. We're wrestling. We're playing. I'm, you know, all that stuff. Um, but just basically just a good, fun kind of like party-esque breakfast. And then like going outside that that literally is pretty much ours now every day. Now, of course, that's constrictive for some people in certain conditions and climates. But um, but um, but yeah, that's what I would say. And that's that's one that, you know, that just like if you just find what that is, especially with littles, it's just like it's just enough to just be, you know, and then we come home and we nap and read. And and then we always do movie night on Saturday night, which also helps. So it just feels really I think we've crafted it now where it feels easy with littles rather than before. It felt like kind of having to monitor them and be on top of them and micromanage them. Yeah. It seems like the skill you really need to make sure that you start this practice with is that kind of retrospective, um, like what what worked, like <clears throat> and what you were describing, Alyssa, even noticing what's going on in my own spirit, and be able to talk about that, um, as opposed to trying to nail it, like do it badly, but 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 do a really good retrospective. Like it seems like if yeah. you do that, if you l- allow yourself to go into a Sabbath, you do your best. Like you might have a plan. Um, you might think this is going to work great. <coughs> Uh, and then you're, but you're able to have a conversation afterwards and say, okay, what, what worked a lot of times, you know, when you're doing this, I, you know, we talk a lot about the importance of having some kind of family meeting, a coaches meeting between you and your spouse, making sure you yeah. are thinking through and capturing the things that work. And if you do just do discover, oh my gosh, it seems like every time when we just have like this awesome breakfast and just go outside, everyone comes back and feels rested and totally. also feels united. Uh-huh. Like, can we do that? Maybe we could just think of different ways, but you, you discover it's going to take you several months at least to probably discover some of those lessons. Um, yeah. and, and so that's, that's just, that's the cycle you got it. You're signing up for. Yeah. Well, and the, ex- the experimentation is what does that too, where I think it was, it took us three or four years till we had the movie night idea at the end of Sabbath. And that was a game changer just because it did so many things we weren't expecting. It just, first of all, it was really easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two, like when you actually how do I say this? When you actually specialize a night for a movie, it makes it way more different than just like we veg out and always watch Netflix. Yes. Yes. It kind of, it feels like a peak moment. Like Saturday is when we get to watch cinema and stories. And 
And we're actually doing this right now with uh, Marvel. And it's like, literally, I think our kids will remember this in like 20 years that like, you know, I'm always, I'm super into it. I've seen every single one. I've seen them all in theaters, you know, all 30 of them, whatever. <laughs> Alyssa's never seen them, never heard of them. The kids obviously not with their ages. Are you going to remember this in 20 years, Alyssa? Is that are you like? She was, yeah, I'm loving Because yeah, she's finally getting into it. So, so I don't know what it That's was, awesome. but I finally got her over the hump. Well, of we, like, were, we all had COVID. Yeah, we had COVID. We now. I was like, an and, and, we, and we started with the new Spider-Mans, which are actually my top ones. And Ooh, the kids yeah. fell in love. Alyssa fell in love. And so now we're just awesome. watching like all of them with a couple exceptions, the more darker ones for the little kids. But um, but it's like, and they're talking about it all week and now it's their Legos. And now it's like, mm-hmm. and that's just from that kind of more like making it a tent pole moment for the family mm-hmm. rather than just like vegging out, you know? And so that was that that was an experiment a spe- experimenting one and now we love it you know and it closes the day really well it marks it it's just there's so many parts about yeah. it i think too as we've gotten into it more we're a little more um open to like it doesn't mean that we don't have people over for dinner or birthday parties or totally. i don't know and so just having that movie night saturday it was like why are we ending sabbath at like one when they go down for a nap let's just kind of just so fading. good let's yeah, yeah. keep going mm-hmm. Yeah. But with that mindset, now it's like, oh, let's have friends over and have a pool party or, I don't know, and stay up later, have a bonfire. Yeah. I mean, it's sem- it's summer right now, but yeah. um, just that idea of like, let's keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just <laughs> feel like the, another way to put it is like, I think we're just our best selves on Sabbath now. We're kind of just like, whatever, family. let's do it. Like, we kind of just like, you know. Well, it sounds know, like part, part of what you, you guys are experiencing, Sabbath, and I, I de- we definitely have this experience, is that when you do a good job with the morning and the afternoon, you have a different kind of energy in the evening and it's predictable. Like, and this, this, yeah. kept ha- this happened to us. This is why we started doing our date night or our kids do a yep. uh, game night with Papa. <coughs> part of it was because when we got good at resting, you know, in that first eight hours of the day, we had, we, yeah, we had being introverts. We still had this really, that was almost the peak of our week in terms of social energy. And yeah. so we wanted to yeah. be with people or yeah, wanted to have those yeah. conversations at that time. Yeah. Cause I think some families debate, like, should I be isolated and not do say yes or no to something? And yeah, yeah it kind of just naturally turned into a non-discussion for us. Cause it was just like, this is fun. Let's just go hang or have people over yeah. yeah. But that's so yeah. true, Jeremy, about how you spend your morning. Kind of sets the tone. Um, it really does set the tone. And it's yeah. true. I remember John Mark Comer had said something like, um, past, he used to be pastor in Portland about, the first 10 hours, well, I think it takes 10 hours and then he starts to feel his soul come back to life. Yeah, and I yes. feel like that every Sabbath, like it takes, mm. it almost feels like Friday night. I just feel dead. I can't put two words together. Mm. And then as I rest in like afternoon, Saturday, I feel like, oh, like I'm revived. I feel back to myself. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it really is our favorite day of the week. Yeah. I feel like Friday night, we used to try to make that the really big one. And now, and it is for the dinner and stuff, but then, yeah, we used to really like, you know, have people over or whatever. Yeah. It's the kid's favorite, you know, ice cream and treats and all that. But, but yeah, it's like now what it really realistically is like super fun celebratory dinner. And then just like, we go to bed at eight, like, cause it's kind of just kind of like, you know, (laughs) we're done. We crashed. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Just, it just, it is one of those things where like when the phone goes off and like a book comes out and you're just kind of finding out your body release, it's like, Oh, we just go to bed. We just, we are done. (laughs) Man. Yeah. I totally understand and, and relate to that there. You know, you crash into the Sabbath. You, you, you are experiencing something on Friday, but you, you just, it is paying attention to those kind that kind of energy that Friday night yeah. is going to have a certain kind of energy, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. And when you start totally. to figure out what kinds of things in those blocks, really, uh, mm-hmm. the kind of energy that really brings you life, brings you together, gives you that total recharge that you're looking for by the end of the day. Yeah. yeah you can get there eventually. Um, I want to totally. dial one layer deeper into Lisa, you, when you were describing, and it was really struck me when you, you, you said the. Um, the, the right mindset when the kids, you know, the, the, the toddler is throwing the tantrum that you're going to run into. And I, I think that one of the mindsets that people oftentimes mm-hmm. will have is like, how dare you rob me from my sap? Yes. Like, you know, like yeah. the, you can feel this, you know, entitlement because I said yeah. this was restful and now yes. it's not, you just destroyed yes. my sap. I mean, I think that that happens a lot to especially mothers, you know, when they are, when their expectations is rest. And I think that sounds like yeah. you clicked into another mode. Like you, like I'm going to keep my peace. Mm-hmm. during yeah. this day you know and that's like, what i think the practice is but yeah yeah what is that yeah. talk talk about that yeah i mean i think this is something i'm learning in general this last year i mean it happens when we our school days when it's like how dare you have a Blow meltdown the day, and then yeah. like the school day it's you know and so um and i think for you know you feel like i think at the beginning of sabbath for so long it almost feels and i sometimes it would feel like a pressure to me. Like we have to rest. This is our one day to yeah. rest and we have, you know, things planned. And um, I mean, you can feel like that sometimes if you go on vacation, like how right. dare, like just yes. because you're on yeah. vacation doesn't mean that, you know, 
Things Sin's don't happen. There. Sin's not there. And so Sin isn't on vacation. I feel like we get sick every vacation. We like. Oh, here's the line. Sin doesn't go on vacation. So it's there with you. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes even Jeff and I like, I can't think of a specific example, but sometimes I feel like we actually, we fight on Sabbath because we're not so busy going so much. And so things yeah. maybe that have been building up in the week, it finally, like we finally have time to like yeah. talk. And it, so, so I think, um, yeah, it really, I think in general, but also Sabbath is something that shows it um, in your heart. Just, I think just in general, that idea of like every day waking up and like just open-handed, like Lord, whatever you have for me. And um, I, I remember one time a mom friend said to almost like, not ex- like foreboding joy, but almost expect these things to happen. Yeah. Like expect mm-hmm. a toddler yeah. tantrum, expect, you know, whatever. So that when it does happen, it's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. you know, and so, um, yeah, I don't know. I think just realizing that this, I think I'm just learning so much about um, accepting my humanness and accepting my kids' humanness. And um, not that that's an excuse for sin at all, but it's just instead of like these ideals that need to be met, it's like, these are our realities. Mm-hmm. Our realities is, you know, I'm tired or I feel lonely or I feel not seen. And where my kids are fighting. And so instead of being so against it and trying to run from it, um, entering into it and like, okay, this is an opportunity. How do we um, disciple in this moment? How do we talk about our hearts in this moment? How does, where's Jesus in this moment? And I think that's in general in my life right now, but I think it especially plays out on Sabbath. Um, And I think as I move, even as I'm talking, I feel like my body's relaxing a little bit because it's there. That just takes away all the pressure. Like it's not, and I think as moms, sometimes I know I felt this so much. I wake up feeling the pressure of making sure everyone's emotionally like stable all day. And it's like, that's not mine to bear. We are not responsible for other people's happiness, but we can be committed to it. And so when things like that happen, it's, it doesn't mean we failed. It doesn't mean that we just have to toss out the day or that it's a failure. It's just, okay, this is an opportunity to like, trust and and like Jesus is inviting us into this real moment and where is he um so yeah that's good yeah yeah I think you know there's a song you know we sing Shabbat Shalom and it's like it means peaceful Sabbath and it's really an invitation to your soul to do something Mm -hmm. for the next 24 hours to be at peace and that one of the most basic way I think for Westerners to understand that is you don't have to be productive and so yeah. you don't have to do the productive thing. You can, you know, you want to be present. And there's also, you, it, it allows you to enter into this timeless space and for your kids to enjoy a different kind of part of you. You know, there might be, you know, for six days a week, I might really be trying to dial into how to, how to do, and it's not that I'm not present. It's not that I'm not trying to be consistent, but, but I also, I, I'm not busy doing other things. I just want to be with you. And a lot of this mm-hmm. is setting up, you know, your family for the success of being able to be in a timeless space together. We, we're, we don't feel like we have to, you know, run to the next thing or and this is part of why I think you have to be careful with, you know, having scheduled things on a Sabbath that are non-negotiable or that start at certain times, as yeah. opposed to just how things kind of flow one into the next. I think that that oftentimes is what I've seen a lot of people where this works really well. So holding yeah. on to that piece, um, mm-hmm. kind of having a pattern as opposed to a schedule for a Sabbath yeah. where mm-hmm. things kind of flow and then just just be present, be in the moment. This is, this is our opportunity to just to be with our kids and to not feel the compulsive urge to be productive. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think that's why <coughs> it's so hard for us because we're so used to producing yeah, that's right. and, and so it really takes so long to learn to that. We are not what we do. Yeah. Like we are. And that, yeah. I think that's the whole invitation of Sabbath. We are children of God. We get to be in delight. And just as you're talking about, we get to be in delight in our kids. Like, we're just here. We just want to be with you. I think the father in the same way is like, I just want to be with you. And I want you to this, like when Adam, Adam's very first day was the seventh day, which was Sabbath. Like he rested the first day. And so he knew who he was, his identity in the Lord, that he is not what he does. And then the second day was he got up and rest and went to work. (laughs) And so I think that's the same invitation of Sabbath for us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, guys. So we're, we're rooting for you. <laughs> we know this is going to be challenging. Yes. Uh, when you start this, we want to make sure those expectations are dialed in, uh, that this is going to be, a, you know, a process of learning 
but we we just have this huge amount of hope that over time we can learn to rest and that's really yeah. you know what we're what we're hoping we see that so thank you guys so much for sharing you know your story yeah. and those insights is really helpful no thanks for having us and real quick one last thing i'll say too is um yeah. you know reach out too if you ever have like questions or you're trying to dial it in or figure it out i mean i think we're all fairly reachable online well maybe not Alyssa, she's barely on there but <laughs> but yeah i mean a dm for me or like a tweet yeah. or an email as long as it's not you know going to take me 5 hours to respond with a a thesis, then I, I love popping in and helping out. So, so we love kind of engaging and sharpening on that. And then also one thing I think I'd push people to is the family teams. Um, Instagram, I believe has a pretty strong Sabbath uh, highlight from like two years ago that does, is a Q and a that shows yeah. it like really shows the dinner and some of the day of. So that, and then the seven day family course is, is a strong one as well that I think yeah. bends, bends or blends into that as well. So yeah, but thanks so much for having us, Jeremy. This was fun. And I can't wait to listen to the rest of the series. Thank you for listening to the Family Teams podcast. If you're enjoying this content or have learned something new, please make sure to leave a rating and review and share with a friend. To stay up to date with our events, new content, and products, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Family Teams.